Well, here we have something called Yupo, which is a kind of synthetic paper. People use it with watercolor, alcohol inks, and acrylics. And it's white. It comes in sheets, a pad like this. And it comes in different sizes. And you can use it in a variety of ways. Uh, the main thing that's different about UPO is it is not absorbent. So any paint, wet paint you put on it won't absorb into the surface. It will sit on the surface. And that makes for some interesting effects. So I'll show you what I mean. I've got a sheet of 9 by 12, but I think I'll work smaller. So I'm going to cut it in half. And I've also got some watercolor paints, Hansa Yellow, Quinacridone Rose, and Ultramarine Blue. I only chose these because they're simple to work with. So I always recommend starting off simply. You don't need a lot of paint. You can just put out a small amount. I have a small container of water here for dipping your brushes. And if you like to add pencil, you can as an option. So I don't have an idea in mind of what I'm going to paint or draw. I'm just going to make some marks and shapes on the UPO just to show you, um, you know, what it does. Okay, I'll just do like a sort of a soft, rough landscape type of thing. And start with some yellow. It's good with UPO to use strong colors, so you don't need to dilute your paint too much. You just use it pretty much almost straight out of the tube. And if you want to make it lighter, you can just dip a little bit of water in here and lighten it. You can also spread it, you know, if you want to have it be a softer edge, you can do that too. If you want to drop another color into the first color, you have plenty of time to do that. Oh, it's kind of pretty red. And you can blend it a little bit too. So I'm going to hold this closer to the camera. That paint is not going to dry very fast. It's only going to dry as it evaporates. And I'll show you later how we can speed that up if we want to. So let's try some blue. Makes a little bit of purple in there too. So again, the paint is just pooling on the surface of the UPO. It's not going into the UPO, it's just sitting on top. Now, if I want to speed up the drying of this, I can, well, first I can let it sit and dry for 
about 30 minutes, or I could always bring out my blow dryer and speed it up a little bit. So this is mostly dry. I didn't dry it everywhere um, yet. I just wanted to show you what happens if you try to add another layer to the paint to make it darker, for example. Let's say you wanted to make this mountain shape. I'm gonna hold it up to the camera. Let's say you wanna make this darker. Can you do it? Well, let's see. Yes, it's working. Okay, so that worked pretty well. And the trick was I did not dilute that with water at all. So I pretty much used it straight out of the tube. And so you can get uh, a couple of darks. I would say maybe you can add two to three layers on top of the UPO, but if you try to add many, many layers, it probably won't work. This technique is good for really simple imagery, not so good for super complex um, images when I mean, you can, but that's a little bit harder. So let's say I want to play with the wet paint while it's still wet. All right, so maybe I want to soften this edge or even pull a color out into the white part. I'm just playing now. You know, we're not too concerned about the finished product. So I have a brush which has some water on it and I can go up to the edge and just pull it out just lightly touch the edge. This is kind of like what you do in watercolor, traditional watercolor, but you can pull the paint away that way and it will bleed. So you get this super soft edge. And if I wanted to add sky color. Let's see. Let's see if I can add a light color. Maybe I need a bigger brush for that. My water's getting dirty. Okay, so I can either put that sky color and not touch, but you see I've already touched the mountains, and so it's doing this cool, weird bleeding out into the sky color. So if you like that, if you want that, that's great. If you don't want it, then you need to leave some dry white around your wet shape. Here, I'm gonna let the sun bleed too. Now here, it won't bleed. I, oh, yes it will. <laughs> um, it'll bleed a little bit even though it was dry because I've reactivated it. So it's super loose. You have to kind of like working loose. If you're, if you're not a loose person, you might not like this, but it's good because you don't have a lot of control over it. So for people who like working that way. It's kind of fun. Again, you're giving up control here. I think I'd like to have a green in there somewhere. Another thing you can do that's fun is add a little bit of alcohol mixed with water. That's what's in this bottle. And when you spray it, it's going to force the pigment to move and it'll dilute the, the water and make it move. And it makes for an interesting texture. So that's fun to try with UPO2 in watercolors.
So again, if you want this to dry now, you're going to let it air dry for a while, or you can try using your blow dryer, but the blow dryer might change your design and move the paint around.